Hello there, it's me again. It's one of the regular things, isn't it? Right, today though, we've just got just the dog, just Marley. No, no Xerxes today, he's bugging off out somewhere. Saturday, he's probably gone clothing on the catnip. Anyway, I thought I'd talk about something that I've been meaning to, to cover for a bit. And it's uh, it's the craziness of our movement. The ones that seem to grow rapidly in popularity. What are you doing, mister? <laughs> well, off the floor. <laughs> Get up. Sorry. <laughs> Marley, stop being so friendly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you slag. <laughs> Such a slapper. Like on his back. <laughs> yeah, he's been a bum hole. Come on, you. Going for a walk. <laughs> no, he's, he's just a big soft lump. That's all he did. <laughs> See you later, look. Right. After that minor interruption. The crazy ones that seem to grow rapidly in popularity for seemingly no real good reason. Now, admittedly, some of them, in some ways, do sound pretty plausible, yeah? Or ish, should I say. That's a big ish. Really big ish. Think it don't take a lot of logic to disprove them, yeah. Now, the ones I'm going to talk about today a stone engine being built in the 50s, ridiculous, giant tree stumps, equally as ridiculous. Some simulators, absolutely ridiculous. And finally, radium is good for you. <laughs> oh my God. Right. The Stonehenge one being built in the 50s, right? I know why people think that. That's because during the 50s, archaeologists and historians decided to do a experiment. And they took one of the uh, one of the collapsed arches that was still somewhat sort of stood. There was, there was basically the two standing stones that were still in the ground, and the lint on the top had fallen off. And they decided they were going to prove that ancient Neolithic man could raise that lint lintel up. It's just manpower alone using an airframe. Naturally, it failed miserably. So then they got a crane. That also almost failed, but they did manage to get it up. Get it up there eventually. It took them hours. This was using a crane, right? This is where this idea comes from. That it was built, it was set into that configuration recently. It wasn't. It wasn't. It's been pretty much as it was. Since, well, since it was built, really. The UK is full of folklore and legends and myths. Quite a lot of them featuring stone engine in them somewhere. Take one of the main ones, right? Which is the legend about how it was built, yeah, when it was built. It's also one of the first first stories about Merlin that was ever told. And basically Merlin floated the stones from Wales, these sarsen stones, big blue sarsen stones from Wales all the way down to Salisbury Plain on his own and built it on his own. A bit like Edward Lee Scanlon <laughs> built Coral Castle. Yeah, 
If you don't know anything about that, go and have a look. It's the same thing. There's other stories. There's one from when it was pretty, from pretty much when it was built, about around 5,000 years ago. And this is a very ancient folk tale. Um, English folk tale. Cornish, in fact. And that's of Jack the Giant Killer. Now, yeah, that's what I said, Jack the Giant Killer. It's what the fairy tale of Jack and the Beanstalk is based on. But far more elaborate, bloody and dark. <laughs> now, the first iterations of it, like I said, were 5,000 years old. We know that. It's documented. It's also based on a real man. We know that. It's documented. We know roughly where he's buried. There's two sites, one of which is St. Michael's Mount. Under St. Michael's Mount, they actually built the island around his grave. Right? That mentions Stonehenge being intact, being a circle of stone arches. Right? But there's been several other stories, several other stories. In the background now, you're going to be seeing pictures of, um, first of all, uh, a tapestry from the nine hundreds depicting Merlin building it, right? Look at the shape. Make a note of the shape. The next one is from the Doomsday Book, 1066. Look at the shape. Look how it's depicted. The third one is from a, a history of, of Britain and its monuments and its historical sites from the 1500s. Again, look at the shape. These next are going to be photos. This one, 1867. The next one, 1873. The next one, 1910. The next one, 1930. 1940. Notice anything? It's always been that way. These people going around saying it, it's, it's been re-engineered, it's been recalibrated, whatever. Rebuilt, it's bullshit. You've just seen the proof there. Check your folklore and your legends. Whenever you're looking at historical sites, if they match up to what the folklore and legends say about them, then they're real. If you don't find anything, then they're not. There's plenty about Stonehenge. Next thing, giant tree stumps. I'm going to go over this pretty quickly. <clears throat> right, let's take Devil's Tower as an example because that's one that people always say is a giant tree stump. Yeah? Giant ancient tree stump. That thing's roughly 900 feet tall. And its base is roughly two, two and a half miles, three miles. Yeah? On a five, sorry, five miles going all the way around the circumference, right? The summit, that flat top, which is the reason why people say it's a, a giant tree stump, is around roughly 1.5 hectares. Uh, 1.5 acres, sorry, not hectares, it's about 0 0.8, 0 0.6 hectares. For that to be a tree stump, that tree would have to be twice the size of Everest to leave a stump that big. Right? Now Everest is already scraping the atmosphere, yeah? Scraping the edge of space. So, twice that means that at least, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be diplomatic, right? At least a third of it is poking out of the atmosphere, yeah? Into space. Tree's dead, instantly. There's not enough oxygen on the planet for that tree to breathe, yeah? Tree's dead. When that tree dies, or that top bit falls off, Imagine, right, what a 50 mile high tree, yeah, what weight that is, right, now chop a third off, so say roughly 50, 15, 15 miles high, dropping onto the earth, what kind of damage is that going to do? For a start, there won't be a tree stuck there left, I can tell you that for nothing, for another it'll leave a massive trench. No trench there, yeah? Now, as ancient tree stumps go, Devil's Tower is a sapling compared to the other ones that are suggested. That debunks that. 
right? Simple logic, that's all you need. Sun simulator, same kind of deal, yeah? Yes, there are some sun simulator patents. No, none of them work, none of the orbital ones. The ones that they do have in use are far smaller, ground-based, and used mostly for hydroponic agriculture and weather, weather, well, weather modeling experimentation. Yeah. So when they're, when they're doing stuff like uh, hurricane models or stuff like that using wind generators, they use sun simulators to simulate the effects of the sun. Right. That's it. There are no orbital ones. Yeah. If there was one in orbit, right? If it was using bulbs, yeah. The strongest bulbs we have are pretty well LEDs, right? They're the brightest ones. To make something as bright as the sun that we see in the sky, right? It would have to be twice the size of the sun. Yeah? It would also have to be twice as far away, right? For it to actually make daylight on the planet, yeah? <clears throat> Which means that what little heat we would have got off that, we won't be getting any, any of it. So we'll freeze. Plus we're twice as far away, yeah? We're not in the gold lock zone, so we wouldn't exist. If you, um, you built it with mirrors, yeah? <sighs> so you get the same effect as the, night, as the daylight sky, right? To shine enough daylight from the sun onto the planet, you would need a mirrored object the size of the Earth, that side of the Earth, yeah? To actually make that daylight sky, right? And it would have to be really close. If it was that close, it suck, it, the Earth is sucking in and destroy it, it would be all dead, right? If you moved it far, further away, it'll get darker, yeah? It'll get colder. So not only will it be cold and we freeze, it'll also be dark, which is worse than the bulbs. But you have the JWST. The JWST is tiny, yeah? You'd never see it. It won't shine enough light over at the Earth, right? Even with the strongest bulbs. So you move it closer. Well, the closer you move it, the less light it reflects onto the Earth, right? So you basically end up with New York lit up in daylight and nothing else around it. Everything else will be in darkness. Everything else will be freezing, right? Not to mention the fact that it's so close to the Earth that the, fo the focused beam, focused sunlight beam from those mirrors will set fire to New York, right? It'll burn it all down and it'll burn down everything around it, yeah? Again, think logically. There isn't a sun simulator, yeah? Right. Final one, radium. <laughs> when I heard this guy talking about it and saying there's been tremendous health benefits from radium, I nearly fell off my chair laughing. <sighs> radium at first will give you lots of energy right this golfer billionaire I've forgotten his bloody name i'll put it across the bottom in the, in the like, bottom of the screen now he was feeling he was feeling very tired all the time very lethargic so his doctor prescribed radium infused water right for six weeks he took around three or four drops every few hours into his drink, right? After six weeks, he started getting intense pain around his head and around his jaw. A week later, his jaw fell off. The radium had degraded all of, his, all of the bones in his jaw. His jaw literally fell off. He died a week after that. The radium girls, right? Radium was used for everything. It was a, it was a wonder material, like a wonder drug for people, like loads of health benefits. This is what they told people during the 1910s and 1920s. They put it on everything, watches, all sorts. The women that painted all the numbers on the watches and stuff like that, they were told to ensure that their brush was always, always had a very sharp point. So for that, they licked it. Because they thought radium was good for them, they constantly did it, yeah? They weren't bothered. Until that was around... Around 1925, when some of them started getting sick, some of them started getting lots of cancers. Most of them started dying, started having noses falling off, teeth falling out, ears falling off. Yeah. So they decided to sue the companies, right? These radium companies. 
The Israeli companies didn't want to pay up, so they hid it from the public for years. A decade later, they started getting money from it. All the safety standards that we have in the Western world is thanks to those girls who gave their lives dabbling radium in their faces. Yeah? Now, the same guy has gone on about uranium glass. <laughs> Uranium's twice as radioactive as radium. This is what I mean about bullshit theories. People need to use lo logic. There's reason, reasons why that information is no longer in um, herbal remedy books or remedy books or anything like that. Because it's been discovered later on that it's not really that good for you at all. No, yeah, but they could have made that up. They could have made that up. Tell that to those people. Tell that to those people. Radium's highly radioactive. Radioactivity is not good for people in any way, shape or form. So, Mr. Guy who's drinking radium all the time, if that's your, uh, if you're still alive, well, basically, just good luck to you. I really mean it. I really, really mean it. I mean, this is one of his many crackpot theories, this bloke. Some of the stuff he says is right, yeah? But not a lot of it. <laughs> he's kind of believing he's smarter than he actually is. And it's going to be to his detriment. Especially if he's drinking fucking radium or uranium. Idiot. Anyway, sorry to burst all your bubbles, but had to be done. Like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. I'll see you later.